Hello and welcome to the CNBC Africa special. I'm Rofiwa Madzana, coming to you from the International Convention Center in Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, one of South Africa's fastest growing economies. And we are brought here for the 20th anniversary of the Durban Business Fair, a fair that brings together businesses from all over the continent to showcase their offering and of course mentor the small to medium businesses that are emerging in the various economies. During this highlight special, we'll be talking to some of the big wigs in various industries as well as the smaller businesses and what they hope to get out of events such as this. Being in Durban, the most beautiful city, we have the challenge of job creation and poverty alleviation and inequality and that is the reason why we have to venture into this. And one of the most uh, important facets of this 20 year celebration, which started, I would say, with only 45 uh, entries at that time in 1998, that's why we say 20 years. We now have thousands that have um, exhibited on these stands. The youth are our future leaders, and if we can't do anything for them, then it's useless. So we have a great youth summit where hundreds of them are there enjoying the discussion. We have master classes on different facets of business. We had over two days, we had big businessmen like Vivian Reddy and also Rajan Reddy who's in the Kezer and Oil, giving them input as to how they should get into business. I think that is fundamental. You may, we have entrepreneurs who start business and then it collapses. And we don't want them uh, to feel that there's nothing else left. So success stories are important to share. We have stands here that are, that are from the municipality, which I want people to exploit the situation. Firstly, it's the, uh, the radical economic transformation. Go and learn about it, read about it. Talk to our, our officials. Get to know what is the RET about. This is one opportunity where you'll never get again until next year. Sit with the officials, learn how to fill up forms, get onto the database. This is your time to get onto databases. Also, we do have our Shisayama outside. We have the bunnies and all, all of them, uh, the small and emerging businesses and um, many others that you can go and enjoy them and not only enjoy but learn learn from experiences ask questions and we will see you next year as a Tegwini municipality we've invested 200 million uh, towards uh, this uh, uh, fair and out of that 200 million rent 70 percent is gone to the procurement of this whole setup out of business uh, fair we've managed to create uh, about 10,000 uh, jobs. So about, uh, 30, uh, we've created uh, about 33% uh, GDP out of that. Each year we are improving. I'm from the Durban Guangzhou Sister Cities Association. We have an association with Guangzhou and Durban and we promote uh, arts and culture ex exchange. One of our businesses, uh, which is based in China, is a clothing manufacturing company. We specialize in denims. We bring in imported and completed garments into South Africa. We've been in manufacturing for like uh, 15 years now. And um, with the influx of the exchange rate, as you know, it fluctuates from time to time. We, we try to remain uh, competitive. The market is so volatile at the moment. And uh, in China, it's actually more feasible and uh, more economical to manufacture in China. We get a lot of um, good garments. We get we are ahead of fashion. We travel to Europe around the world. We buy high fashion garments. We come to South Africa, we style them, and we show these products off, off to your local retail market. We also have a local manufacturing plant based in Mandini in Isiteba, which we supply the local market with as well. So we're promoting both import and locally. 
and we're trying to establish that level of authenticity in washes on the diamonds on the local side to be manufactured in South Africa. The Durban Business Fair has been very great to us as the youth of Durban and, us and the surroundings. Um, we've grown so much. It gives us such a great platform to be seen as our small businesses and we grow in the sense that we actually not only get to expose our staff, but we get to meet people who, have, uh, who are ahead of us, who are able to teach us and to mentor us as to how to run the business. I was always loving how my mother looked like. I started shopping from her wardrobe until I ran out of the clothes, so I had to find other vintage uh, suppliers. So out of wearing all the clothes and standing out at churches, at uh, parties, I did find a reason that, you know what, maybe I can start a business with this because people used to say, you always look different. And we all want to look different as women. So I thought this is actually a gap and a business idea. This is a DZ dress. We make we make all these items that you can see right now in our store with from the vintage inspired uh, items patterns. Uh, it has pockets. It's simple. If any age group can rock this dress. You can actually rock uh, dress it up or down. And seeing as this is the Dublin Business Fair and the 20th one, we find a lot of value in helping SMMEs, empowering them, giving them the tools to make their businesses grow. So every year there's a, a, a competition called the Best End Stand. So that means the best stand and how they present their business, their marketing it, um, the knowledge, the product knowledge, and just your bare essentials. And so what we do is, this is for the second year running now, we are part of the judging panel. So together with Antiquity Municipality, uh, we go around on every day judging all the businesses and at the end we pick a first, second and third prize. So this year the first prize is a one year highest certificate of their choice. So whichever program they feel that will help take their business forward. And the second and third prize is two five week online programs. So they can do it at their own world whenever they are free uh, to help them as well, empower them and take their business forward. Because we specialize in business. Well, it's a lot of business related uh, programs. The city has got a program called Sister Cities uh, Relations where cities across the world, not only Africa, we cooperate with them and find ways of working together. So over the years we've created a platform also for our sister cities to come to Durban to exhibit and bring also their small business people to come and showcase you know, all their different talents and skills as we have people from Ghana, Zimbabwe, uh, Cameroon, bringing all different, you know, from fashion to cosmetic uh, products. The city of Bulawayo and Deben, they are the sister cities. So we share a lot in common. So when the uh, city of Deben uh, is having an activity, always they call us uh, to participate. So this is an opportunity for exhibiting what we have in Bulawayo in terms of uh, tourism and uh, the uh, opportunities when it comes to investment uh, that are available in Bulawayo. Bulawayo is a gateway to all other tourist destinations in the city, in the, in the country, and also is the gateway to uh, regionally to other countries. I've heard a lot about the Durban uh, Business Fair, and this is actually our first time here. It's been very insightful, we've learned a lot, and uh, so far the experiences we've gathered would help a long way in uh, boosting our business in different ways, directly and indirect. We are into organic share cosmetics, that's what we basically do. We are trying to move away from the age where we do all these chemicals on our body to an age where we use organic uh, stuff on our skins to take care of our skins right. This is African, we, and it's indigenous to Africa. Lots of people don't know that shea butter is indigenous to some parts of West Africa. You can get the nuts growing everywhere in Ghana. You get it growing in some parts of Ghana, especially the northern belt and some parts of the middle belt in Ghana. So uh, it's a product that everybody should jump on with if you really want to treat your skin right. At Sandy, but we believe that you should feed your skin right. And you shouldn't feed it with any other product but violent shea butter. So we've started small and also the products from Ghana, they're looking actually for distributors, you know, so that they can help 
they can help, you know, expand markets for their products as well. And we're hoping people can take this thing seriously and look beyond, you know, borders of, of South Africa because there are many opportunities out there as well. As my international partners always come back and, and you know, I always say, you know, the leads that they get here are real and, you know, businesses started growing for them in their different parts of the world. The work is still out there for us to, to do really and honestly. You can say you have enough collaboration because people to people also is a huge uh, a component of what all these collaborations are all about. So we're still working on that to also try and change the mindsets of our people as well to be more acceptable to our foreign visitors when they come to Durban and, and you know, start taking them or making them more welcome when, they, when they're when here. And we're hoping in the future as well, we'll be starting if budgets allow and uh, taking our small business people as well across you know borders of South Africa so that they also can be able to showcase. With the advent of technology and with now having like you can go and search and you can google anything now and you can watch videos online there's I would say technology is a great start now because if you don't have access to me for example you can now, the, the video that they've shot here, they post it online. You don't always have to be here. You can then go online and watch the video. And you can also go on Google and search for stuff. So I would say that there is part where it's also the youth's responsibility to uplift themselves as well. Not just wait for things to be handed over to them. They must also go out and seek knowledge. Like the youth who are here, it's raining, but they got up. They've been here for two days flat out listening no one dragged them out of their bed they volunteered to be here because they want to grow so we must as much as i'm looking at what the corporations and the adults are doing or public sector i also feel like 50 percent should be the person's responsibility to want to grow the other 50 percent then is companies like if google for example has tools like digital skills training those are online for free and youth can access them any day and any of those tools that are online that they can use for free, they must grab them. And then when these forums happen, they must attend them. Really what we were discussing today was to help the youth see what it takes to become anything or to achieve something. And the key insights first stem from understanding where you come from and accepting and acknowledging where you come from. If you had an absent father, understand that and own it and find ways to forgive your father. If you grew up poor, accept it. If you feel you have low self-esteem or confidence issues or doubt, accept it. Don't deny it, but then there are ways to go about strengthening your confidence, strengthening your faith. And those beginnings of it was just talking about the everyday basic things, like so that the kids who grew up in an informal settlement can see someone who grew up in the same shack as they do and see that it's possible. And also the kids who see someone who's standing there talking about the importance of mother tongue and that just because you speak English doesn't make you clever than someone who can't speak English. And we need to stop putting too much pressure on people who can't speak English and think that they are dumb because they can't. And the other things that we were talking about was just what it takes to win in the corporate sector. And how do you win when you are a minority in a corporate sector. In this instance, if you're black or female, you are a minority in most of these corporations. How do you win in, in, in an environment where the odds are mostly against you? In an environment where everyone reminds you of who you are? You, they don't let you forget who you are. And how do you win? What are the, the tools that you need in order to be able to win? And then the last bit was just about how do you create a great brand? And that most brands are built on great reputation, which that reputation is built on winning and strong values.
Great Durban is an NPO that was set up by uh, the Etegwini municipality under economic development unit. So our mandate basically is to support, stimulate, and uh, to motivate uh, innovation around the city of Durban. So uh, we are running uh, quite a few programs for the youth and for businesses as well. And we are here at the Durban Business Fair to run the, the tech zone. So basically what we do, we have um, exhibitors who are exhibiting their innovative tech uh, businesses. And today we were running the innovation challenge for high schools. We had four high schools and uh, the topic was around maritime. We are here to assist entrepreneurs with their IP. So it's basically their intellectual property, the prote protection of their trademarks, their patents, uh, their designs, copyright and so on. Um, so our, our um, initiative here today is to assist the entrepreneurs with the protection of those um, avenues of law. I think it is a lack of understanding as in um, you know the protection of your patent and certain aspects of those uh, that type of things. Uh, so here we are here to make it known, uh, to put it out there that uh, you know the protection of certain aspects of your law have to be done before, for example, a patent is out there. Um, so Adams and Adams strives to you know try to educate, and we often at these business expos to educate young entrepreneurs on on uh, especially IP law. I'm so excited about this because I think that the business of the industry is really important you know it's film business and the business part people often forget everybody's got an idea and I've heard a lot of people here today saying you know I have an idea and then I took it to the broadcaster but they don't want to commission it why because you've got to think about the business of it how are you going to deliver it what makes you a safe bet so you know people are not thinking about how to build a business first and then take their projects out and pitch them so I think it's really important and I'd love next year to be seeing a section just on the business of film as opposed to on the film business or television business but on the business side there is a lot that is happening within the film culture and more especially what uh, the Etegwini municipality is doing in terms of embracing the film culture within the KZN um, I mean, there were students here from DUT, um, uh, there were also students from other colleges around who are studying film. Uh, one wouldn't even thought that, you know, there are film schools around here. So that shows that there is a lot of interest towards film. Uh, but obviously it has to be embraced also and making sure that the industry is ready for it. And by doing that, it's creating platforms like this to unravel the business within within the science that goes with it that uh, people don't only think that you know film is only acting directing or producing but there's a lot that goes behind it um, there are people who create um, costumes for films there are people who do carpentry and create sets there are people who uh, create sound lights and all these things that is not only about what the audience see but there's a science behind it and so that science must be embraced and that science when it's well embraced it can accrue to economic uh, uh, empowerment the south african industry it's 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 very it's it's ready it's ripe for anything and it, I, I believe that you know we can compete on world stages we've proven ourselves with little efforts that has been happening there and there but the problem is the efforts were not done by us it was done by the others exposing us to uh, the outside world. So I think what has to happen now and what South Africa needs to embrace is the fact that local talent must be able to tell local stories but they must be supported and in making sure that they can tell local stories. And the biggest challenge that they raised was the issue of IP. So they don't know how do I own the stories that, are, that I've written. When I go to pitch, do I ask people, I mean, uh, do I ask the broadcasters or the production houses to sign a DNA or do I just pitch at risk? But in terms of our law in South Africa, we're still not protected and that's why our, um, our government and the parliament is, is um, actually debating the whole issue of uh, the amendment of the Copyright Act, uh, the Performance uh, Protection Bill and so on. So we're hoping that will also change in answering their question so that when it favours um, the creators of work, and the IP favors the creators of work, that these writers, these producers, uh, these actors will also be protected. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
or more properly, as we are in what I would like to say is my favorite city in the world, San Bonan. For those of you who are not familiar who I am or what it is that I do, I think it's important that I let you know how my name is AK. The most important job title that I currently and always have occupied is that of a dreamer. And if there's anything that you leave here with today from my speech, I want you to leave with the belief in the power of dreams, because that is why we are all here in the first place. And give yourselves a round of applause. What's great uh, from our standpoint is that it's showcasing the creative industries, and uh, certainly film is a big component of that. I think uh, cinema in Africa is continuing to develop and grow. Um, I think the young filmmakers that we have, uh, uh, in, certainly in South Africa, and um, you see in Nigeria and many other countries, um, that uh, Kenya also, they've just won some awards, that the filmmakers are really passionate about uh, telling African stories. So I think that's really good, and I think that when you look at um, what the business fair is doing, it's trying to balance both the uh, the creative aspects and trying to give people the knowledge of understanding of how to make business work within it. And so I think that's um, uh, vitally important that we as the city of Durban and me as a Durbanite um, feel that we should be supporting. Um, and certainly with the industry, we're developing film studios here and uh, looking to continue to grow the industry. And I think the audience, uh, both here in KZN and in, uh, on the continent um, of um, emerging filmmakers, have so many opportunities today uh, with new technologies, etc., uh, to develop their craft. And it's great to see the young talents that are coming through, both on the acting side, on the, uh, on the uh, performing side of, uh, uh, of the technical, and so those are all um, great things that are happening. But at the same time, I think uh, job creation is the most important aspect. And certainly our objective with the building of film studios here is to, to, to boost that. But at the same time, I think broadcasters have a huge responsibility uh, to develop the and nurture the talents that are coming up. We should tell Af uh, African stories, and I really don't mind who tells them. I think it's important to get the messaging out and that people see it. But at the same time, I think they, there's a growth parallel. So, you know, I get criticism for uh, casting Idris Elba as Mandela, but at the same time, you know, I did yesterday with Laleti Kumalo, and nobody says anything about that, you know, or Sarafina for that matter. So I think bottom line is the more people see, the more they get accustomed, the more they want to tell stories in different ways, and it's evolving. It happens like that all over the world. You know, you've got British actors playing American roles, or Americans playing British roles, or, you know, vice versa. And we shouldn't be petty about these things, as long as the shows get on the screen. Devon Business Forum and uh, the arts is really important because the arts also need uh, to be developed business-wise because it's not just about the craft. And I think this summit is really important for the youth and, and that's why we're all passionate about it because once we leave the bet and somebody must carry on with the race. There has been significant growth over the years. I mean, we only used to have uh, three channels and then another channel came in and then uh, Mnet opened up many more channels. And so that way it means there are more cameramen sound people, lighting people, grips, crew, actors. So there is development, it's been, it's been growing, but not, not, not really in, in, in the greatest light because we also have issues like IP. So when we open the doors, uh, there's more things that come in that we need to deal with. But it's a positive thing that the industry is growing because we need people to be employed. And I believe that the industry really employs a lot of people. The big thing that I take away from today, first of all, I found it really inspirational. I think there's incredible speakers that were here today. Um, but mainly it's about youth trying to find opportunity of how to open the door. That's what I'm really hearing is often people feel like I don't know how to get in or am I good enough or now I just had a question with somebody saying to me, you know, can I be an actress because people have self-doubt. 
Um, so the takeaway for me was people looking for a way to open the door and get in. And my response to that is you just have to show up and you have to keep showing up and keep showing up because eventually somebody is going to notice you if you've got the right attitude, if you're positive, if you don't get, don't give up even when you feel like, you know, the day is long and nobody's taking notice of you. Just keep showing up. The industry has grown tremendously and there's a lot of great talent out there. I think that um, we still have challenges with intellectual property rights. It's a critical issue that all of us have to take into account. As the industry starts to grow now and we move into the digital field, you know, that ownership and way to monetize your content and your ideas is going to be increasingly important um, because it'll be smaller and smaller niche places where you can get your information out to. Um, I do think that there are still challenges that face women in the industry. Um, it, I, in some ways, I think it's an industry that has much less problems than others regarding women. But I do think that there is still not enough women in leadership roles, um, directors, producers, head writers. So I think that that's a challenge that we all acknowledge and it's a challenge that we're taking on, taking on board. I think the industry is working to do something about it. We've seen the exhibits that have been displayed by various small to medium businesses at this year's Durban Business Fair. We've also engaged with young engineers who are in the technology field and really using the fourth industrial revolution to transform various industries. And right now I'm inside the Mamba, which was made by students at the University of KZN. And on that note, that's where we leave it for this CNBC Africa special. From myself, Ropi Wamadzena, and the team, it's goodbye.